Okay, all right, folks, we're back. Um, the reason I don't make many uh, demonstration videos <clears throat> I like this one is because I, uh, they take a little rehearsal and writing of a script to be effective, and uh, I usually just wing it and like leaving a message on an answering machine. I can't stop talking about stuff that just isn't important, so... Um, occupational hazard, but a limitation and uh, video production, it's niche work. So uh, my niche is not the demonstration videos, but um, it's too bad because I'm good at certain softwares that could make the world a better place if I could get the message out there. But uh, it's good that uh, the intended audience um, a thousand years from now Will appreciate uh, how odd this is and the other intended audience one person who asked me a specific question knows me a little bit and w won't care um, will you do you care I didn't think so so uh, without <laughs> without further ado here we go meanwhile I'm gonna have to shut down again because of all my rambling on you can hear the fans already starting to cook here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to turn this mask back on. And we want to get a, uh, the chroma key effect going in shortcut. So making sure that the clip we want to affect is selected. So it's selected. We also make sure that the filters tab is selected. And up here, you can verify that this is the clip that you want. Okay. So we hit the plus in the filters pane, and that takes us to filters. Filters are cool. Here's your video filters here. Here's your audio filters here. Here's your favorites, and you can toggle your favorites by this little asterisk, turning it on and off. Oh, band pass is in my favorites now. Oh, uh, band pass isn't in my favorites because it's not one of my favorites. Here are my favorites. But the best cool thing is, is that if you know the name of the filter, you can just type, we're doing chroma, C H R. Chroma key simple, chroma key advanced. I use advanced. Okay, now the first thing you notice is our mask work is gone. What you have to do when you're doing multiple composites on the same track is you have to come down here on operation. You want to make sure they're all on minimum so that they don't affect each other. Or at least that's my interpretation. Seems to work. So chroma key advanced, you need to get the key color. Nice a shotcut to write all these little notes for you. Just hover over something and it tells you what it does. Click. So I've got some crosshairs. And I'm going to take the color from right around down here. And look at that. We've affected most of the uh, green already. Except, of course, we've got some nasty spillage. So the first thing I do to reduce that is I go down to green delta. And... You can, you know, for the most part, get rid of it. Except, as you can see, when I'm going along, as uh, wild an effect that may be, is we're starting to lose Robbie. We don't want to lose any of Robbie or the details in those wonderful capes he wears. My goodness. If you even like capes a little, you got to get in touch with this guy. He'll make you one. So anyways, um, that's probably about the spot yeah once again I don't want any any kind of bad effect so you got to make sure that you don't go overboard with the green delta and it's still looking a little rough so what we got to do now is employ another kind of filter remember this it starts with a it's right at the top it's called alpha channel adjust now when you select it uh, it defaults with no change, which is good because as you select the changes, you'll be able to see what they do. In this case, I'm going to shrink soft. And there we go. It's shrunk a little bit around Robbie's edges. And you can bring this up a bit to reduce more. Now, you may notice here, let me make this a bit bigger so that you can see that in shortcut the key chroma key is not perfect but it's a little rough around the edges you can always add 
to your filters pane to the same clip, you can always add another alpha channel adjustment. And this time, you're going to blur. And that gives you a blur. And you can control the size of the blur. And there you can see the green. Now one way to reduce the green is to use another filter. This one's called Key Spill. You have Key Spill Simple and Key Spill Advanced. You want Advanced. And here, there's a little trick. You have to turn uh, the chroma key off. And then you have to make sure Key Spill is selected and choose this eyedropper here. And you choose around where you chose it for the screen. And then for the target color, you take maybe a flesh tone. OK. So now we can turn the chroma key back on. We want to go back to Key Spill Advanced. And we want to change the hue gate, knock it back to get the proper color. But what that's in fact done is it's changed some of the color. Even though you still see the green, what we're going to do now is go back to the alpha channel. And whereas the blur is 96%, we're going to knock this down to about 7%. And presto, we have a pretty nice cutout of Robbie. Now that's kind of boring. Let's put something awesome behind Robbie. So we're going to need to find some video to replace that green screen with. So I'm going to save because I've done a bunch of stuff. I wouldn't want to lose my work. So now that I've saved, I'm going to make sure that the playlist is selected and I'm going to open file. And here I happen to have some pretty groovy fractals. So I open those. They're playing in the source monitor. I see that it's a, a five minute clip. Well, we only want about a minute, if that. So I'm going to trim the clip down. And there I've only got 23 seconds or so. And I can take this into the project by hitting the plus button on the playlist and now it's in the project every time you add something to a project you want to hit save now I can drag this down to the timeline and look at that we've got groovy stuff happening behind Robbie so I'm gonna hit play to see what happens well, that is not going very fast. One frame at a time, because right now the computer is doing so much. We've thrown a lot at a computer with something like 8 gigabytes of RAM. And meanwhile, it's recording me all the time. So I'm going to hit stop and show you. If your computer bogs down, you can still work with things. But what you want to do is go to your filters pane and select the clips with all the effects on and you can toggle effects on and off. So for instance, I turn the mask off, all of a sudden there's everything there. I turn the chroma key off, turn all the alpha channels off, turn the key spill off. Careful, do not, do not press this because this will delete your effect and you can't undo filter work. You can only undo track movements and project arranging filter work you can only reset the parameter and if you're using keyframes it's good to understand this so control Z is not something you want to hit in a panic word to the wise okay so now when I hit play it plays pretty much in real time and you can you know see and hear what's going on but when you're ready to encode your final project, you've done all your editing, you can simply turn all of these things back on, being very careful not to erase anything. Okay, now one thing people ask me is, Mike, how come you put a black track at the bottom of your shotcut project? And I say, well, it's because uh, it doesn't work very well if you don't have the black track. So let's by the way, these are neat controls here. You can turn off things. And you can turn the sound off here. 
And if you encode, it will encode with them off. So you have to make sure before you encode that all the tracks you want to use are on. Anyways, so here we have our nice key of Robbie. If we turn the black off, for some reason, all of our composite effects stop working. So it's important to have black. But even without the track there, if I move the black out of the way so that there's the, the default black, again, it's just not working. So with the black track underneath, all the composite effects are working. So that is why I do that. In a future version of Shotcut, this may, this may have changed. Shotcut is an open source software, which means it's free, no strings attached, and it's constantly improving. It's written by an open source community, and it's here to make the world a better place. Anybody can edit marvelous videos like this one. Anyways, this has gone on too long. Sorry for the rambling. I hope this is somewhat helpful. Even if you get just a little thing out of it, it's worth it. Okay, saving my project and saying goodbye.